Hello, 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 and welcome again to Inside the World of Max Headroom. Um, you know, today has a dual purpose, because uh, one, I do have a topic I want to bring up, and also I'm curious about your feedback about it as well. Um, but also, I'm testing out my cool guy, fancy-ass mic, so I could be part of the cool kids. I was beginning to feel a little bit uh, out of it, and I like, uh, you know, being part of the the popular crowd, so I thought that I would uh, upgrade my video, I mean, my audio system. And uh, so here we are with these goofy things on my head and this crazy pop filter and all that stuff. So uh, without uh, any further ado, um, the other thing I wanted to use this tape for was that uh, I found myself like in a rabbit hole. Um, and uh, that that rabbit hole is in reference, I found myself really kind of falling down, 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 down deep into it when I did the last tape about social media and Russ McCammy. And um, so I thought I would just get started. And, you know, I really would appreciate like any ideas you all have, because as I mentioned before, I, I don't consider myself some big social uh, media buff, but I have been doing my homework and I have been watching all kinds of shit. Stuff I never thought I'd be watching before. Um, and I find it quite fascinating actually. And so I wanted to uh, make some comments and see if maybe I should pursue this as another thing. But it all came up out of the Russ McCammy narrative, okay? Um, and I thought I could just begin by asking one simple or a couple of simple questions. One is, where the fuck would Russ McCammy be today if it wasn't for social media? Secondly, where would secondary people in the cast of characters be without social media? And I'm going to mention names this time. They put themselves out there. And so I'm going to feel free in using their names. Where would Marissa be? who, I mean, I'm a little sarcastic, but, you know, she strikes me as the, uh, like, you know, uh, rock groupie of the McCannamy, or of Haunted House, uh, you know, phenomenon. Um, or how about Holly? Or uh, how about Carol? Or how about um, Anthony Silvis? You know, where would all these folks be without social media? And then the the, the, um, the concurrent question would be, then, you know, where would the whole Russ McCammy phenomenon or narrative be if um, there was no social media? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Just think about it. Um, where would it be? I mean, I'm not sure. You know, maybe you'd read about it in the newspapers or maybe, I don't know. But, you know, social media, in my opinion, um, and, and and before I go on, let me say something. I'm just as guilty as anybody else. Okay, I, again, I'm not trying to say I'm you know holier than thou or above anything as I rise up in my chair. But um, you know, where would it be without this internet thing and um, all of this transactional um, escalation occurring uh, around certain topics? And there's a lot of them too. I mean, Russ McCammy isn't isn't all uh, uh, isn't the only one, um, but l let me just stick for a minute to Russ McCammy. Um, you know, where would he be? I mean, you know, I saw a tape of his the other day that was posted uh, by uh, my good old friend uh, Justice Sleuthing, and it was like he called it the um, the morgue, where he allegedly um, injected with a dirty needle. Uh, some kind of MK Ultra special solution that he has, and um, um, to me, I think it was just the biggest example of how Russ has like a two or three barrel shotgun approach. Because not only was he providing some sort of experience for um, for the person that was supposedly under MK Ultra or some bullshit like that. But um, also, uh, he was playing to the audience. He was actually make. he calls himself a movie maker, you know, and in a way, I, I think he actually is because he knows in certain ways, even though he's a dumbass, he knows what he's doing. 
because what he was doing there, think about it. If any of you saw Wolf Star's tape, like I said, it, it has to do with this thing called the morgue, where he allegedly like hypnotizes somebody and then injects, and he repeats this phrase over and over again. He injects with a dirty needle um, that needs to be cleaned out and it's dull. Um, and then he tries to show her injecting her, but yet you never really see the needle go in. Um, and then he covers for that by saying, it's really hard to do this with one hand, holding one on the camera and one with injecting. Well, you know what? It's almost impossible to do, Russ. <laughs> you know, it really is. So what does that mean? It means that you were sort of actually using both hands, knowing you weren't going to inject her, but you were trying to frame the camera in such a way as to make it look like the needle was had actually gone in, but you never really saw it go in. So in essence, what Russ did was make a suggestion to the audience that he has now done something that he hasn't, okay? He also made a number of other really interesting comments that I believe were for the, for the um, benefit of social media, were for, for the benefit of um, the audience. Um, like, for instance, one of the things he said that really struck me, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to flex my sight muscles or anything like that, but he made a comment, he says, he kept refer referring back and forth to it. You know, he was saying, um, look, she's getting REM. Her eyes are going into REM. See, as the, med as the medicine takes more effect, the REM's, and he's sorry, REM, 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 REM. Well, you know what's so stupid about that? The woman had like cotton balls over her eyes and then it was taped over with like some saran wrap. So, you know what REM is? It's rapid eye movement. And what that means is just that you're in a very deep state of dreaming. I mean, it's not even a drug-induced thing. I don't think you have REM when you're like ODing on heroin or something. Um, so, uh, you know, how, how could he tell that, that that actually some kind of REM activity was happening when even when you're observing it in a person asleep, you need to use a lens to put over their eye because the movements are so short and so fast that it's very hard to see through the eyelid, you know? So how does he, how the fuck does he know about REM going on when the eyes are, have, have cotton balls over them? You know, it's absolutely fucking ridiculous. But it's very entertaining. You know, you get what, what happened inside. Oh, he's not doing that. Oh, he couldn't be doing that, you know. Um, and uh, maybe he is. I don't know. You know, dirty needles. Ooh, you know, uh, you know, most people watching the show know about the AIDS epidemic, right? So, oh, God, let's give let's give the audience a real stab in the side and, you know, make them think he's really some fucking evil dude, which I believe he is. I'm not trying to say this is, you know, I started out saying a lot of this is stage hypnosis, and a lot of it is, and this would be an example of it, only multi-stage hypnosis, because he's also sort of inducting the audience into some kind of trance state, that funky music playing in the background and stuff. Um, but um, I do also want to go on record with saying that dude and his friends get really carried away. And that's when it becomes abuse, you know? And and uh, so anyway, I got that over with. But, but um, you know, he was doing a lot of other things with this woman. Like, like I'll, I'll point out what they were. And you can go back and watch the tape and see if I'm not right. He knew that a person can only lay still like that for so long before some sort of involuntary muscle movement would happen, like the twitch of a finger or the twitch of a head or something. So he would wait for those kind of things to happen. And then he'd say, see, there's the there's the, the muscle movement. That means she's going into zone G, you know, and then, then he'd wait until, you know, she moved her head a little bit. Oh, good. That's safe. At least her head's working. But don't ever take anybody out of this too fast. You know, I mean, he was playing to the audience more than he was giving any some kind of any scare thing. You know, perhaps he had induced some form of trance in her, which probably she brought to the manor. She was ready to go through whatever. So she's going to go along with the suggestions. He doesn't even have to do any induction. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a like I mentioned before, it's a self-selective process. Um, but um, so I guess getting back to this whole rabbit hole is I started to notice that he was totally playing to the audience. He wasn't giving this girl a scare experience whatsoever. Um, but he was giving the audience a scare experience. Oh, Russ, I can't believe you would do that. Oh, my God. You know, and so, and I think he's very consciously aware of doing that. I don't know if he's consciously aware that he's putting people in trance states, but I know he knows how to market. And um, he was providing, you know, at-home scare services via social media. Okay, now let me just jump 
for a second, okay? Because also, I'm going to try to contain this somewhat around the Russ McCammy narrative, but I hope to broaden this. And that's kind of, I want to watch your feedback about it. It's worth going into. Um, but, you know, at the same time, there are, there is a, there was a war brewing um, between uh, two fairly well-known Russ McCammy posters. I'm not going to mention their names, but it started to like get intense. And, you know, I have seen this happen before. Uh, before I even got into the Russ McCammy thing, I started to notice about these what I call YouTube wars. And it's like stations that go against other stations. And then that becomes part of the fabric of social media, you see? I mean, I'll be honest, many of you may like him, but this guy called Repsion, and I don't mind using his name because I feel closer to this community and I don't want to insult anybody, you know, that's in, in our little Russ McCammy thing. But I don't mind some of these other fuckers because I, I think what they do is outrageous. Um, this guy Repsion, who's basically started out as, I think, a gamer, but is has made a living out of um, criticizing Om Omnision, the biggest idiot in the world. I mean, if you want to talk about an idiot that's exponentially greater than Russ, look at this guy. You know, nobody knows if he's telling the truth. Nobody knows if he's actually a sex offender or not. Nobody knows shit. But he's, you know, gotten this, if he's not getting any money, he's certainly getting some narcissistic, um, you know, gratification out of, uh, oops, I used that word, I'm sorry. Um, some um, overcompensations for feelings of inferiority. How's that? Uh, by making himself this, you know, outrageous, bull baiting, alleged sex idiot, you know, who seduces kids and waits till they're 18 and then screws them. It's crazy. Um, but, What's just as crazy is this guy Repsian. And I saw some other English cat too, young guy who was like, you know, holding a cup of coffee and like, just like, you know, sitting back and chuckling at, you know, oh, we finally got, you know, Omnissian. I think that's his name. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, so you got these battles going on between stations. Another one, one of my all time favorites, please catch my sarcasm, is the whole to catch a predator movement. Um, I could go, I did a tape on it and you can watch that as a reference to know what my issues are with it. Um, but I'll tell you, I saw another very interesting social media type of thing happen, which was, um, somebody tried to criticize him, uh, in the comment section. So what did the fucker do? This is the guy, I don't know his name, but he's on Predator Poachers. And there's also another guy called Pop who wrings his hands in front of the camera like he's ready to, you know, skewer some beef as he's going to go catch some guy, like, in a Walmart while there's other customers around. I have to watch that shit. Give me a break. But that's all because they're social media. You know? It would never make it through the national networks, this kind of bullshit. I'm surprised Chris Hansen got away with it for so fucking long. You know? But, um, you know, so, so anyway, this guy tried to criticize... And, and I saw the tape. I saw what he was criticizing of these predator poachers, you know, and um, it was righteous what the guy said. And uh, what you know what the what, what the head dude with the red beard did? He pinned his comment knowing that all of his followers were going to attack this guy. Oh, my God. What a strategy. That guy must be pretty good at chess or billiards or something like that, you know. Um, but, you know. That's another like social media uh, warfare technique, you know, how you pin a post um, or a comment, excuse me. Um, and then, you know, I mean, there's just all these different ones that are that are like they, they war against each other. And I start, started to see it go down between these two people um, that we all know. And, uh, you know, nothing, I'm not casting any kind of shit on either of you because I think, remember how I say the whole's greater than the sum of its parts? Well, you guys are part of the whole, see? You're part of the whole of, uh, of um, you know, this media thing. Um, and so this social media thing. And so, you know, if that's part of the way, part of the unspoken rules of how social media operates, then I can't get mad at either one of you guys for, you know, starting to blast each other. Um, you know, you know what I mean? Cause you're part of a greater whole and your behavior is dictated 
by the acceptance or rejection of what the norm is of that whole. You feel me? You see where I'm coming from? I've seen a whole bunch of other ones too. Like for instance, this is one of the biggest surprises to me, and I'm sorry if I seem arrogant in saying this, but that is, I also did a tape on it too, so you can refer back to it. But that is the MLM, the multi-level marketing uh, epidemic, um, which is really humorous to me because, you know, pyramid scams, whatever you call them, have been around since the 60s. And I, in my other tape, I mentioned that I got involved with a group, not in, in the MLM aspect, but in the psychological training they gave to their employees and later went public with. So I was kind of familiar with multi-level marketing. This had to do with the company called Holiday Magic. But you know what kills me is that there's a thousand mostly young, I would have to say millennial aged women who have been, you know, victims to this uh, MLM phenomenon, which I think it's really interesting that, they, that it kind of resurged, you know, it came around again because when William Penn Patrick, the head of Holiday Magic, died in a plane crash uh, with one of his clients, Holiday Magic went up in smoke and pyramids caught a really bad reputation, but now they're coming back. You know, all good things have to return or something. I don't know. Um, but there's all these women posting about that. And then there's ones that are posting to sell it because that's what the whole thing is about is recruitment. It's not about selling anything. Um, and then there's people who then start to, who have been burnt by the MLMs and start the war with the people who are still selling it and talking shit about them, you see. So another war breaks out. Um Let's see if I can figure out a couple more. I know there's millions of them. Um, well, there's one young woman, again, who I, whose name, I just want to leave names out. Uh, she's very articulate and, and, and very interesting. I can't stand her nails, but she's, she's, she's very interesting. But she's got a beef about everything. I mean, even the name of her show insinuates that, you know, she's going to beef about something. And it's always about something, somebody else on social media. Take also, for instance, Instagram, which I, I have a page from a long time ago, but it's just a bunch of pictures of artwork I've done. Um, you can all see that in the video here in the background. Uh, but um, I didn't realize what Instagram had turned into. Um, you know, there are these people, I mean, I don't even know what the hip terms are for it, but it, it's really, in my opinion, a little gross. Um, people call like stylers or changers or you know, like, like these people that report on their life and then you find, come to find out that they're really reporting falsely about their life. Um, and then, of course, you find a bunch of people because social media is based on freedom of speech, right? I think. Then there are become the haters of uh, those people once they find out that they've been following them for 10 years. And uh, actually, you know, they just are good at Photoshop when they look like they're in Argentina having tapas at the local bar on a uh, Saturday evening. So, you know, th this is just an example of why, to come back to Russ McCammy, why I'm getting deeper and deeper into this rabbit hole of what like social media really is. You know, I mentioned several times that I basically dropped out of Facebook. I still am a member. I check in once in a while, um, but, uh, I really didn't like what was going on there. And I, I just broke off. Uh, and that's around the time I started the YouTube station, which I like much better, but it still has the same kind of social media uh, negative consequences. Let me try that again. The negative, it still has the negative consequences of social media. You know, for everything positive, there's always a negative to it. You know what I mean? If, you know, when I was in therapy, you know, one thing I'd always worry about is someone would say, oh, I really want to change this. I really want to change that. I can't stand it. Yeah, but if there's a payoff to having it, are you really so eager to give it up? You follow? So, um, you know, social media to me is also being a systems guy, it's a massive system filled with subsystems and sub interactions, some which feed off each other, some which don't. Um, but I just find it absolutely fascinating, especially these, you know, these people that are like creating false identities. Even on this end, I think it's just a bogus phony piece of shit. Sorry, Omni. Uh, but that's the way I feel. So what am I saying? I'm saying, of course, social media and the internet is a great thing. Um, you know, it, it, I don't think I have to even explain why it's such a great thing. 
Um, however, I think it does bring with it some negative consequences and um, all good things do. Um, so I'm thinking about proceeding with exploring uh, various aspects of social media, uh, looking at different people um, that are into different aspects of social media um, and and just, I don't know, just trying to explore and be as systemic as I can and look at as many subsystems as I can and try to tie them into a cohesive whole. But one thing I'll tell you right now, and you've heard it a million times before, there's one factor in closing that makes social media so powerful. And that is, drum roll, brrr, I can do it on my pop screen. Brrr, um, that is anonymity anonymity. I should write a song about it, you know, anonymity. It gets me free anonymity. I don't know. but <laughs> See, that's social media. I can get away with that shit if I want to. Or I can swear. Um, but I think there are some negative consequences that, you know, need to be examined. Uh, just to, really as a harm reduction effort to use it right and not waste your time or, or not even for, you know, even for other, um, what do they call us again? Content creators or whatever the fuck we are. I, I, I mean, you know, maybe people need to think second before they jump into a war. Um, it, it, it reduces the quality of your content. Uh, all it does is amp up people's own, what we call countertransference or your own reciprocal feelings that you might want to get out through vicariously through some other issue like an idiot like Russ or an idiot like uh, Omniscient or... or anything like that. Or it builds people's stations like uh, RepCN. Um, so anyway, I'm starting to repeat myself a little bit. And uh, so what do you think? I mean, should I explore this phenomenon a little bit more? I'm feeling down for it. Um, I really am. But anyway, let me leave you again with the same question that I left you with uh, before. And that is, just think about it. Where would Russ McCammy be? Without social media, where would Marissa be? I think in the laundry. Doesn't even rhyme. But, um, you know, think about it. Where would Russ McCanny be if there was no social media? What would that hypnosis tape have been to the participant if he wasn't playing to the audience? You know, I'm, I've run out of steam. <laughs> so... Thank you all again. And again, hey, you know, I notice a lot more people are are, are uh, talking to me, and I like that. It's a lot of fun. And hey, here's a personal shout out to you, Katie, because we've been talking a bit, and I like you. And uh, you got good, your heart's in the right place. So uh, there you go. So thank you again. And uh, this has been another episode of Inside the World of Max Headroom. Later.